Oh, hello. Um, let's get on with it then, shall we? Yeah. Hmm. 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 <laughs> All right, almost some stuff. The Hyperions wasn't what I expected. I knew it was going to be some kind of like, I mean, not over the top or all sorts of stuff like you'd see in a superhero thing. It's going to be quite closed, but nice. I mean, really, it was. <sighs> uh, it was very simple, straightforward, and focused on just like the certain amount of characters and uh, their backstories. What's going on now? And that was a nice take on superheroes. And wow, two superhero films I'm enjoying when I'm not a superhero movie fan anymore. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, some hmm. I mean, obviously the driven part there is Carrie Elwes uh, playing Professor Ruckus Mandelbaum. Uh, he, he's, you know, he's just quirky, he's funny, he's out there. I love his hmm, yes, and uh, it's very... Just dry and <laughs> he's very, he pretty much steals the movie. I mean, honestly, I mean, it pretty much it's high on this list because of him. But the other actors weren't bad at all in what they were doing. We also had Penelope Mitchell, Vista Mandelbaum, a young girl that he took in. So what he does is he takes in orphans, kids, and makes them into a superheroes. And is their father to them. And, uh... They call him dad on stuff as your kids, but then there's a lot of stuff in there like, does he care about like them personally or just as a whole? Because like, years later, they get replaced with another team, and then he's working on another team right now, which is the current stuff. Started in 1965, and then now it's 1979, and we're seeing the result of that, what they're still doing. There's a museum for these superheroes, and the movie just takes place basically with that. Uh, Vista Ansel, so another one... Uh, from the originals they were like they're very close brother and sister basically and uh sticking with them for i wasn't expecting a heist uh heist inside here and just everything goes there you're seeing flashbacks forward what's going on now getting between mostly between vista and uh you know her dad basically uh, a lot of family issues daddy issues basically with that but it's very i don't know it works very well uh it shot very well the coloring looks like that old type of era. The sound is good. The music is interesting. Some odd choices, but some like cool choices in there. There's animation. <laughs> How did this get so bright all of a sudden? Alfonso McAuley played Ansel. And then there's Maya, played by Elaine Tan, who, what's funny is Alfonso and Elaine both were born in the year 1979 when this takes place, which is kind of weird. They have powers, uh, Vista can uh, read people's minds and make them do things against their will, basically. Uh, the other guy, Super Strong, Maya, I like the creativity they had with the, it's like cartoony, uh, with her, like, teleporting, uh, jumping type of ability. And it worked pretty well because they had to work with a lot of camera shots, you know, like one minute, it's moving this way, and then you see the poof, and the next minute, while still in the shot, it, it makes it look like that she is appearing here and then there. Pretty nice. Again, a lot of good characters, the people you meet, the other police, the big police chief guy or whatever. He's funny. Other characters, the hostages, they, they're they friendly, they play a game of, uh, they play some board games, and we're board game fans here, uh, so that'd be pretty cool to see a Hyperion's board game. And then there's Mercury, uh, a, a bird, an eagle robot thing that's a telephone and it talks. Wish there would have been more of him, wish he could have done more. But that was pretty cool. I was, it was goofy enough just from that alone. Well, we won't spoil stuff with uh, certain characters, but there's Ares, Apollo. Bleh. <laughs> uh, it's basically a quirky dramedy with heart, and it, I thought it worked very well. The ending, very melodramatic, gets you, which, uh, the, what they're trying to do, because it was all about uh, Vista and then her with her father, like I said. And that's basically the conflict there. And will they reconcile? Will he learn his ways? Will he know what he did to harm these children? Not purposely, but he did bring some harm when he was 
getting them out of there for other ones there and there's without spoiling too much it was it was a it was a it was a fun watch it was directed written and animated by john mcdonald and yes the animation stuff is very funny there's different styles and i like the disney-ness of everything uh especially carrie elwes's walt disney kind of oh hello there welcome to kind of like when he's doing the wonderful world of disney thing with the reel and then you see like they're even little tinkerbell it's their bird uh, telling you about stuff, and they went through the powers pretty well. They told you how it works. You had the Titan badges, and it works with going in their gauntlet thing, going into their uh, their body, going getting their DNA, and that causes them to get. And then there's the uh, the cork, which is a thing to stop them at a certain radius nearby in case he was afraid of them abusing, which makes sense what happens in the film. So they explained all that stuff there pretty well for her, instead of just. You know, at least they explained it, you know, and it, and it makes sense and it works. Again, Carrie Elwes is a uh, Walt Disney infilial stuff there and his goofy Rocky Horror narrator type approach and stuff. It, it was entertaining, probably the most entertaining part of it. But again, I thought like everybody did a great, pretty great job for such a simplistic film. Love the shots, the camera work. Uh, again, a lot of people were saying it's Wes Anderson. I kind of see that in a lot of the shots where there's purpose with every shot for whatever reason it was. And I didn't expect all of that. Interesting effects. Uh, fight scenes, what little there were, were done pretty nicely. And it was great that it wasn't what I expected, and I kind of liked that. And I know uh, probably people aren't going to like that, but I didn't mind it being something I wasn't expecting. I wasn't expecting too much. Like, I wasn't going to think it was going to be like this big superhero type stuff there, but it worked. And what I thought was funny is with the Hyperions, I mean, they had everything. They had, like I said, a board game. They had comics. They had a cartoon show. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, I mean, what didn't they have? A board game, and they even had an album, uh, like a record album. It's like with him on the cover, the professor, and <laughs> just like family songs. I didn't play this when they're uh, feeling down, and it brings that back and into. It, it was okay, you know. It was pretty good. I'd say rewatchability. Now that you know how some of it goes. Probably takes one here, but it's a fun thing. Probably watch it again if I could. Another maybe one or two times in my life. But it, it, it stuck a little bit. It was different. And it was like just like a nice little indie film in a sense. Uh, I'd say 7.5 out of 10. Pretty solid. Not the best. Not bad. Right there. Pretty good though. Uh, on the friend scale, a Joey. So thanks for watching. Go check out the Hyperions. Uh, if you can. Uh, again, Carrie Elwes. He, he stole the whole thing, but everyone else did a great job. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Stay gnarly. Like and subscribe, and uh, hopefully go watch some other stuff there. We just did the Batman, and uh, lots of other things coming up. Uh, board games, 80s, 90s stuff, and uh, uh, thanks anyway. Bye. <laughs> yes, yes.